Good afternoon and welcome to Emerald's session. Uh, my name is Nadine Wadia. I'm the Regional Marketing Manager at Emerald Publishing for the Middle East and North Africa region and happy to be moderating the session with you today. Uh, on the line, we also have Inji Magdi. Inji is the director at the El Hazendar Business Research Case Center at the American University in Cairo. Hi, Inji. Hi, Nadine. First, uh, let me share some housekeeping rules with you to, for the best experience during the webinar. So you have the orange arrow on the, on the top right. You can control your control panel. This has every, all the functionalities of the webinar. Um, you can change the audio to microphone or computer to, to audio or computer. Uh, please note all the attendees microphones are muted throughout the webinar. However, this is a very, very practical workshop, so please feel free to send all your questions, comments and experience during the session and we'll be answering them during the session. This presentation is a recorded one and we will be sharing it on our social media with you, with everyone. So back to our session. Um, this is, a, this is a, a, a series of webinars about case writing. So the first one is writing engaging and relevant case studies. And I'm very, very happy to introduce our speaker today for today's session and for the whole series of webinars on, on this series. Virginia Budolica, Dr. Virginia Bujan Budolica is the Said Khoury Chair of Leadership Studies, a professor at the School of Business Administration at the American University of Georgia in the UAE. Hello, Dr. Virginia, and welcome to our session today. Hello, thank you for having me, Nadine, and everybody else. Welcome to the webinar. Okay. So what we're doing now, we're sharing the screen. So you'll see my screen now so that you know what is going on. Very good. So I think... Nadine, you'll help me to tell whether uh, the screen is projecting. Yes, it is. It is Virginia. We can see. Yes, it is. Now. Very good. Thank you so much. Because I'll not see your camera, so I'll see my screen. So let me try to do that. Very good. So the floor is mine. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you so very much for the introductions. Thank you so very much, Emerald team, for the opportunity to conduct this uh, webinar. Thank you, KCC, of course, which is doing that in collaboration with uh, webinar, uh, this webinar and series of webinars uh, together with Emerald. And thank you very much for having me here. So it's my really big pleasure to be sharing some of the tips of successful case writing. Um, I am a really big promoter of case writing. I love doing this, not only teaching with cases, I love writing cases. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of pain, of course, like everything in, in academic world and scholarly and academic world. But uh, it's a lot of satisfaction that you get out of that process of case writing. So um, we had uh, some of the few points that we mentioned in terms of the general agenda for today and some announcements. And we've seen that the introduction on the, on the part of the KCC and Emerald happened. And Nadine mentioned that this particular webinar is part of a bigger program that Emerald together with KCC organized. So we have three different webinars on cases. And of course, I highlight teaching cases, or we call them also pedagogical cases, right? So there are three of them. And then I'm gonna uh, present that rapidly too. Um, you will see that then there are gonna be an announcement about case writing competition with particular relevance to the MENA region. So you've seen that uh, I personally come from, uh, from this region in terms of working. I'm not originally from the region, but I love the region. I love so many challenges, organizational, managerial, cultural, uh, so many other challenges that allow us to write amazing cases. And what is the niche or the opportunity for us to contribute, the people who are in this region in particular, is because we don't have as much of that case study library on Middle Eastern companies. Of course, it is growing and evolving, but not as much as for, let's say, 
North American companies. So we have a nice niche to develop and to build on. And we will see also some announcements towards the end about a reminder towards the end about webinar two and three. So right now it's all about webinar number one, which is focused on writing, engaging and relevant case studies. So my introductions were done already. So I'm based in American University of Georgia and I'm leading the chair of leadership studies at the American University of Georgia. And you see the prominent name of the person who is the uh, basically founder of that. So it's again coming from from a, a Lebanese family. So again, it's Middle Eastern uh, connotation and everything that I do, and I, I do love that. As I mentioned, part of this webinar is part of this big, larger group of three interconnected webinars that we are gonna have. Uh, very important to know that the idea, original idea of Emerald together with KCC is to develop the skills of uh, scholars academics, students who are interested in writing, not only analyzing the cases, but writing the cases, and also to win amazing competition in case writing, not only in the region, but also general across the world. We're uh, submitting very nice uh, Middle Eastern cases for international competition. So we can submit that to uh, regional competition, but also international. So what we recognized as we were dealing with many of those submissions and many of those cases is that um, we need to develop more skills in terms of case writing. So what is needed is really uh, that practice of how to do that, where to start from, what is correct or not really correct? What are the general tips we can embrace and then in really implement in our case writing? So we understood that actually we need some of those practical hands-on uh, seminars, workshops. And of course, given that we're still living in this pandemic, we are doing our best to do these workshops in a webinar style but to make it as practical as possible to address all the concerns that the case writer, the students who are the case writers too, might have. So three webinars, we decided to divide them in three because there are two fundamental parts and then a third one which unites those two fundamental parts in case writing, definitely, which is the part one, which is the emphasis of webinar number one, which is the emphasis and focus is going to be case study. So how to write a case study? We forget about the second part for this webinar, even though it's going to be a little bit difficult to forget because they are going hand in hand. However, the key 99% of everything we talk today about is going to be successful case writing. Second webinar is going to be focused again in a style of workshop, but in this digital manner. Ideally, we should be face to face and then writing and rewriting, but that's the maximum we can do and the best we can do in online environment given the pandemic is the webinar number two focused on teaching notes, right? That pedagogical support system which supports uh, all instructors, teachers, um, professors who are using the case that was developed by somebody else. Because it's easy to use your own case, the case that you developed, but you want your case also to be used by others, right? And this tool is very important and sometimes uh, cases are not successfully published if uh, the teaching notes are very weak. And in many cases, the case is good, but the teaching note is really not good at all. So we need to focus what is the teaching note all about. So that is going to be the purpose of teaching uh, of uh, webinar number two, teaching notes. And then there is something missing. We talked about, we alluded to that, and then towards the, ne the, the, the end of the webinar, we're going to have the announcement about the competition. So many of you would like to submit your case for comp competition. You would like to win a competition. Why not? It's prestigious. It's amazing. And you also want to publish your case. So the third webinar is an important nexus and connector between the two. Why? Because we'll focus on clearly and explicitly on the connectivity between the two parts, which is case and teaching note, and how we navigate between the two. But also we're going to focus on how to successfully publish your case, how to spread the word about your case study. You want your case to also be known by other colleagues of yours, by other students, and those cases to be successfully published. So we'll focus on this process in webinar number three. So 
With this in mind, uh, we rapidly can right away tell you, so you take note in your agendas. Webinar number two takes place in two weeks, so you don't forget what we discussed today, June 29. So mark your calendar, please, for webinar number two with focus on teaching notes. The webinar number three in two weeks time after the second one, which is July 13, and it's about succeeding in the publication process of the case study. So basically spreading the word and also making the connectivity between the case, the content of the case and the teaching notes, right? So July 13, by then you'll be uh, equipped and you'll have all the needed tools to be able not only to write your cases, but also to successfully uh, uh, publish your case and win the competitions, right? So with that in mind, we are ready to move into the um, this announcement will be done later, to move into decorticating the mystery, uh, demystifying that mystery of successful case writing. So webinar number one today, we focus on writing engaging and relevant case studies. So agenda, what we are trying, as we said already, we are trying to have as um, engaging style as possible, as workshop style possible, because we want to equip everybody with the skills of being able to write engaging and relevant case studies. So that's why I put those questions, if you see in purple color, throughout the slide. So I am very comfortable to be interrupted. I actually love that. I am very comfortable with adjusting on the fly. It's not the one who is sticking to the slides. I can go in different parts of the slide if there is a question being ask sometimes or if you're not ready yet to ask I can go over and advance with my slides and then we can focus on only Q&A's but I try to formulate a kind of structure for the agenda so that we can see what exactly we're going to talk about throughout those two hours so we first setting the tone about about the case studies so what types of pedagogical case studies are preferred? That's a general question. So what kind of pedagogical case studies are preferred? Because we know that there are a lot of them, we'll discuss, there are different typologies. So which of them are preferred, okay? Uh, second, uh, we'll go through key features, fundamental characteristics, essentials of pedagogical or teaching case studies, right? I'll also um, confirm the language that we typically use when we talk about teaching case studies. Uh, then case study structure. Let's look at what is the typical structure of case studies. So what do we put? What headings we start with? What subheadings we typically have? Of course, each case will have its own uh, jewel in the crown, right? It has, it has its own specificity depending on the problem that is being tackled and addressed in the case, right? But more or less, if we abstract the thinking, we can see that there are some commonalities in terms of structure. And there are key essentials, elements of structure that we cannot ignore, right? Are essential. And then some sample uh, cases which are successful, which were uh, in the past, we've seen they won even some competitions. So I will go through my screen, open a case, and just to make it again as practical as possible, um, open a case and just walk you through some example. And as I'll do that towards the end, if we have time, uh, where I'll um, even mention different concepts that I covered before through slides, through your Q and A's, through your comments, so that when you see already finally written case study, particularly one that won competition, several of them which won competitions, you can recognize some of those elements of good, successful, relevant, uh, comprehensive case studies for the topic that you want to address. We also prepared, apart that we want this to be interactive, and as I said, that I want you to also send me questions. I'll keep an eye in the chat box. Uh, if not, Nadine is there. Very helpful, uh, Nadine. If she will interrupt me, she'll make sure to interrupt because I have my uh, big screen now projected for the slides. So you see them like that uh, in your screen too. So it's more comfortable to see big screen. Uh, but apart from all these interactive aspects that we would like 
uh, to have and preserve throughout uh, the webinar to keep that agenda of uh, liveliness and interaction and workshop style of webinar. We also prepared Kahoot questions, so it's going to be a nice game of, uh, of questions based on what I'm going to discuss. So we'll see whether we know those essential things. So of course, in Kahoot, you have one right answer, right? So I tried and I, I confess, I spent a lot of time trying to find you know, questions, formulate those questions, because many of the aspects of the case study of lively engaging uh, of course, uh, specific to the topic that you address, but at the same time, there are essentials that we cannot forget. There are like rules that we all need to know when we would like to start our career with writing case studies and even continue doing these re, uh, case writing exercises. So we have Kahoot questions with some, uh, of course, interesting combination of questions which cover the webinar's content that I'm going to cover throughout those two hours. Very good. So with that in mind, we are ready to start digging inside of that. And obviously, we, we already know through the presentation that happened so far that the essential of a case study, of course, is the interaction between two parts. And the interaction between two parts is, of course, one side, which is our focus today, is the case study, which we call sometimes, so that you are not confused, which is called sometimes teaching case study or pedagogical case study, right? So not to be confused with other case studies. Those case studies that we are talking about right now are the teaching case studies, which are used as pedagogical tools in our companies. We can use that for training of our people in the organization, of our employees, and also, in, of course, in educational settings like universities, right? So one side of it, essential, is, of course, case study, and that's content, and that's exactly what students see, right? The ones who read, students, particularly, essentially, and the other part of it, we know it's a teach, teaching note, or don't be surprised if some journals, some professors, some constituencies refer to it as instructor's manual. It is the same thing. It's just the artistry of the language and maybe some synonyms that are being used in that. On purpose, I put them there so that all confusions are eliminated. So pedagogical case study is the same like teaching case study. Teaching note is the same what instructor's manual refers to, right? So those are two different things. And of course, teaching note or, or instructor's manual is addressed to the instructor who is going to administer that in class or to the trainer in HR, people from human resources who hire some workshop facilitators and they can administer case studies. Even in my case, in my university, the new dean, when he came, for instance, she used a case study for the first workshop he'd done with us to get to know us, a real business-oriented case study on a bank. <laughs> so we said, what does it have to do? And then we understood it towards the end. It has to do a lot. He understood us so much. By the way, how we interacted uh, to analyze the case, he understood who his people he's going to manage for the next four years are, right? So teaching note, instructor's manual is being used by the people who administer and who um, actually want the audience to learn out of the case something. So this is not shared with students. This is not shared with people who are supposed to be eventually assessed on that case study. This is used only and referred only by the instructors, okay? The people of workshop facilitators, let's say, in case of organizational uh, seminars. And of course, the Connectivity between the two results in a very relevant and publishing, uh, publishable uh, case study, a case study that you can be proud of, publish in amazing journal. The uh, Emerging Markets Case Study Collection of Emerald is one of them, and which gives you a lot of prestige and reputation and allows you to solidify your name as a successful case writer. So with that, I would like to start with a general question because that will give us a lot of understanding in terms of what do we write inside of the case? Because we are exploring the content of a successful case study, a relevant case study, a case study which is also engaging. Who does a case study involve? And of course, we know we refer to this teaching, pedagogical case study. Who does a case study involve? So if you 
want any of you who is there want to send a comment in the chat box and say who and it can be grabbed or grasped let's say by one single word that the case study involves a collectivity of different people for you to end up to have a then the case study that others can use because you published it and people can access through their uh, libraries at different institutions so i i think if you think quite uh, quite a lot around the experiences you have as a student using the case study or as a professor or instructor who uh, administered a case study and taught in class uh, through a case study you can understand that the case study involves a lot of stakeholders isn't it a lot of stakeholders a lot and some of you i don't know how that nature of collaboration and uh, interaction happens but i don't see any chats uh, with these responses to my questions okay can we can we name some of the stakeholders uh, that a case study involves and think about the final case study so uh, that okay we we got some answers from the attendees i don't uh, see the chat you see it? thank you so yeah. much okay who does okay. it offer? Okay, so um, we have Dr. Muhammad Youssef is saying the case study faculty member himself. The, and, who, uh, who himself? Who himself? The, who? Uh, the case study faculty member. Faculty member, perfect. The yes. case writer, very right. The faculty the member. Writer. Ah, okay. And so faculty member here refers to the person who uses the case in the classroom, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Wow. And, and and the students, uh, the students who are involved uh, in in the case study. Perfect. So the students who are involved and they can be involved in different capacity. Perfect. But the most common capacity uh, student, if uh, students in general can be involved in, typically is the capacity of a student in the classroom meaning the student reads the case and the instructor asks several questions right on the case for the students to demonstrate the knowledge they got in the class right so a student as a as a user of a case right and as a person who is evaluated or assessed on the knowledge the student uh, gets in a given class where that case is being used perfect uh, so the instructor uh this student and i think to see the animation okay i was faster than you okay so perfect thank you so much it was dr mohammed right who said yes yes and we have other answers someone was saying a human resources manager in vocational trainings to the users case studies perfect it's exactly it's a use of case study so perfect i love that you refer to it not only a uh, pedagogical in terms of institution of education it can be in any company any company we need that so hr managers the talent uh, developers in the organization can use case studies the ones that you will publish you will write and publish and can be used for training employees in the workplace of different categories amazing so you refer to such a a variety of i mean some other uh, I, unfortunately i don't see the chat i don't know maybe because i'm projecting but they refer to a variety of users of the case studies that people who are writing the cases are going to offer as a possibility of usage perfect something more somebody more some yeah. another yeah they were they were saying also the employees so the common the common answer is the students the the faculty members uh, the the HR who are responsible for trainings and the employees. So I think they are talking on both sides, the corporate side and the educational side. Perfect. I love that. So you've done already summary for me. Thank you so much. I love that. I love that. Amazing. We have an amazing teamwork in there and assessment of the answers in the chat that we received. Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm surprised a little bit because we are in a in a, a case writing and I thought and you see my thing here was the first one when I've done my animation for the slides, I said they'll say right away writers, <laughs> right? But you're completely right. All of you who wrote the chat in the chat, the comments, you're completely right we are typically used to the case study forgetting about this aspect that we want to write them 
we are most of us in any institution particularly in university uh, as faculty members we use we tend to use a lot of case studies as users from the pedagogical point of view faculty members right like dr mohammed referred to and then students because that's you know that's our academic world what i love with the answers too that you came up with other stakeholders who are users but in the uh, corporate world in any it can be in a, a bank in a manufacturing company it can be in a service company it can be in anything perfect so i love this in terms of who are the users the users is the faculty member who will need help with how can i use that case and if i answer uh, if i ask the question to students do i know what is more or less the uh, sample answer more or less general because there might be a lot of answers there but i need to receive some framework and guideline for me to know as an instructor how can i use the case of somebody else right so one and two from the perspective of those who are receiving it they have to also enjoy doing that analysis of the case because we are on the case writing workshop i put the first stakeholder in the case writing uh, experiment and the question that i ask are the writers right so us so we need to know what to write because and you're completely right you see my second point here in the animation was instructors in other words faculty members professors hr managers and all this the 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 the, the students who are because we are in the academic world so students whom we ask questions about the case and the content and we would like to assess their knowledge acquisition in our course where we use this case okay uh, but I'm, I'm i'm putting it closer to, to to case writing remember it's a case writing workshop it's not how to teach with cases it's about how to write a case right so that's why my my stakeholders here uh definitely are those three okay uh i am at the center meaning the writer i am i, I refer to myself but meaning us here who want to write a case study so and then me the writer who will have to consider all those uh, people uh, for whom i'm gonna write the case but also who will help me to write the case and whom i'll be assessing eventually on the knowledge of that case like students so who else you think can be critical and valuable for my writing of the case, for my using some information from that stakeholder uh, to, to write the case. So do we, we have, have, uh... have some answers? Yes, <laughs> we have some we have some very well engaged audiences today, and they are saying the main character of the case study or the protagonist. Amazing. So the main character or, or it was protagonist, right? That was yeah, the, the word. Protagonist, yes, sir protagonist mashallah bravo exactly okay yeah. so we we have the protagonist it can be typically we refer to one we'll talk about that but there might be eventually one or two because it's very difficult sometimes to put that protagonist aside from the rest of the context but typically we have one decision maker there yes let me see if i had no i'll not project yet tell me other uh, comments there that were also about other stakeholders so the key character of the case something else yes uh they're saying the the organization or the company or the institution <laughs> that you're uh, you're writing the case about yes yes <laughs> exactly because it will involve a lot of authorization and being able to receive the release form so that you can publish or release that case study to a wider audience perfect i think i'm i'm, I'm gonna do it fast let me see yes okay so you see we are going in the same direction that's perfect i love that protagonist protagonists but typically one and others the company in which the protagonist is embedded right where that problem emerges eventually and do we have something else from the chat uh, if you can yeah uh, they're saying also if it's a team so the leadership of the team or the group leader and, uh, and 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 uh, the ones who cause the problems or the the factors that uh, cause the problem of the case study 
<laughs> Perfect, exactly. So basically, it comes from that environment uh, in where the protagonist, right, is embedded, and then typically protagonist is never the guilty one <laughs> because we tend to empathize with the, the protagonist. Now, of course, we see also what protagonist eventually done as a mistake because we can ask that question too. Of course, right? Very good, bravo, amazing. You're completely right, and you see how multi-dimensional and how many concerns we have to keep in mind when we write a case study. So if I were, thank you so much. I love the engaged audience and that's exactly that purpose. So what do we have there? Uh, I am putting because it's case writer. So all this uh, company, team, organization is all embedded in the word protagonist. So I didn't want to just put, but you're completely right because that is exactly your field that is going to be the source of your idea for the case. Uh, editors are very important for the publication process. If you want to make your case usable by others, you need to go through that process. And of course, reviewers, other people who are going to read, in, involving also the people who are protagonists who are going to read the case too. So in that, from the point of view of the academics, right? Academics, meaning we are professors. Let's say most of us are in academic world and we are uh, using case studies. We are writing case studies, right? And we want to understand which type of cases are preferred. Out of that, I would like to see the perspectives of the two most important, two most important stakeholders. Of course, I don't want here to create a hierarchy of importance, but from the standpoint of a educational institution where we are instructors and we have students, and we want to actually use that for verifi verification of knowledge acquisition. Out of all this that we have here, can we say who are the two most important stakeholders? And I think the audience already said, through the order of the um, messages sent in the chat box. The first two that you mentioned are exactly the right ones for us from the standpoint of their of the stakeholders in academic world. Uh, we might be, of course, recognizing the importance of others, but in academic world, in this educational setting, definitely those are instructors and students. And even I should say maybe students first and instructors. So this leads me to sharing the perspectives about understanding what would be a relevant case. What type of case should I write? And why? Who do I consider when I write? Relevant for you, relevant for me, relevant for that organization, relevant for that person? Huh? That's an important key question uh, that I ask. And why did I do this um, uh, questioning about stakeholders who are being involved in case writing uh, or in cases in general? Because as a case writer, I would like to write a case which is impactful and which will catch the attention of the readership and also which will achieve its purpose. So with that, I would like to ask to share our perspective. Let's see, let's try it. So I'm trying to do a, a, wor a webinar workshop style, which is interactive, hands-on and digital online. So it's not easy, but we try. Emerald KCC is also very open to innovation or trying different things. So I'll try to, and I see so far it works good with, with the chat and things like that. So what I'd like to do, a little bit of sharing perspectives. In the entire audience that we have there for the webinar today, webinar workshop style um, today, can I ask for two volunteers? Don't be afraid, there is nothing difficult to do. I would like one to be a student, if we have. If not, then we'll use someone who feels as a student, like me. I feel as a student so many times because I learn from my colleagues, from my students, from everything around, from every single day. So I hope we have a student uh, in the audience, that would be nice. And I would like to ask someone who is instructor, I think most of us are instructors somewhere, faculty members, uh, right? Uh, or even HR manager who is using cases in order to train the employees in, in the company. So I would like just one, the same one student and one instructor. I don't want 10 students, different students. We have, we, have, we have now a volunteers. So okay, we have Ms. Mona Ali as an instructor. Okay, so uh, the name of the instructor Mona, is? Mona, Mona Ali. Mona, perfect. And yeah. student? And uh, Dr. Muhammad Youssef uh, as a student. Uh, Dr. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you see, 
faculty are always very, very, very uh, like innovative. <laughs> I said, no, hopefully we have a student. Okay, we have Dr. Mohammed is going to be the student. Okay, yeah. Dr. I, I think it's a, it's a great idea when a faculty member he wants to be in the students' place to know like their perspective. I think that's that's a perfect idea. That's a perfect idea. We can try. But Dr. Mohammed, please, you have to forget all your luggage of the years of being instructor. You <laughs> really have to, I know it's going to be, that's why the purpose of this, but let's try. I, I love to experiment. Let's try. So Dr. Mohammed, and uh, uh, you'll help me. By the way, because I don't see the, the, the cameras, who is that beautiful lady who is helping me right now? What's uh, your name? Um, I'm, I'm Mahi Mahinur Akda, I'm the uh, trainer for the Kia region. Okay, thank you so much for helping me because I thank don't you. see the camera and everything and I just don't see the chat because I want my slides to be very well projected to others. So, yes, what? Oh, okay, thank you so much Mahinur. So yeah. what we're going to do, we have the volunteers, perfect. Mona is going to be the, the, the instructor and Dr. Mokan is going to be a student. <laughs> very good, I love that. So, let's share perspective. What? So my question, I'm going to project the question, and the question is all about what case do you prefer? So basically, I put here different elements about the case, and I would like to see what our student will answer and what our uh, instructor will answer. So this is easy. There is, of course, no right and wrong. Of course, that's the, 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 the purpose of the game, right, of this perspective sharing game, because there is no right and wrong is to understand the preferences of our two most important audiences for our case when we write our case, right? Student and instructor. So here we go, Makinur, she will continue to help me. So we have, yes. as you see on the slide, because I don't see, just don't confuse when we know who is the student and who is the instructor, right? So you'll, you'll help okay. me to see that. So we okay. always compare those two. Who, uh, who is the student, who is the instructor? So we have those two stakeholders. And then we try to understand what type of cases are preferred and to see what are the answers. And then I, I'll, I'll summarize this to lead to the content of the case and everything else. So question by question, and I help. Question is very this or that. Of course, the reality is much more complex, but for the sake of simplicity and to set the tone about what a good case need to involve, might involve, and should and must involve. We have this um, answer uh, that I have the question and the answer leads to this or that, right? Just two choices. I didn't want it to be endless, just to set the tone to understand what will make a case preferred for different stakeholders. So question one is there. Cases which are success story of failures. So let's see what our instructor answers and what our student answers. Mahinur, you'll help us to tell. Yeah. Instructor, instructor says so this. We're, we're waiting for the answers. So the instructor said failures. Okay. And the and student? Mr. Muhammad, the student. No, you just say student. You say, don't say Mr. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Muhammad. <laughs> don't say. Because I'll continue laughing. Doctor is a student. <laughs> Doctor student. Doctor student. Uh, success. Success. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. No right or wrong answer. Remember. No right yes. or wrong. Second. So we'll have a couple of questions here. Remember my questions, right? Why do I ask? And there is a whole flow for this. Thank you. Second. What case do you prefer? Case which. So I'll not repeat that every time. I'll just go to the core which ask cases, which ask for action and decisions or not, which do not ask the student, the one who is there testing on it to decide on something or to ask. Cases which ask for action and decisions or cases which do not ask for, so just say yes or no, which ask for actions, decisions or not. Right, uh, so that's Yes, uh, for the uh, faculty, for the instructor, for yes. Which asks, okay, and, which asks. And, uh, and the student, yes, too. Yes, too, okay. <laughs> I'm surprised that students, depending. That is amazing, doctor student, amazing. Because some can be say, oh, no, it's good. I just read, I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. No, sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good that we see here, there is here conversion. So first question, not the same answer. Second question, the same. Okay, let's go. Cases based on field work 
primary data or cases which are work or which are based on publicly available sources remember that the reality is much more complex but i want to push in two choices this or that yes okay. don't only just say your preference this or that right of course there might be combination there might be but essentially field work or publicly available sources the ones that you can access go and read and uh, or uh, cases which are based on field work which means that you have to reach out to people to ask to uh, inquire yeah. so both uh, both uh, answers are field work oh, perfect amazing good okay cases based on which describe things and all these recent events or past events recent like last year two years ago three or 20 30 40 preferred again preference okay let's see yeah so just say recent students, past. Uh, so uh doctor student is saying recent events okay okay that's and, student uh, and, uh, and an instructor is saying recent too also says recent okay yeah. Okay. So you see, we have this instructor. We can ask. Uh, typically, here I get a, a different answer, but it's amazing. So it's amazing. So I'll ask at the end one common question. Perfect. Which report on data on a rate? Basic. Basically, take data and just this happened in 1999. This happened, and then the 93. This happened. Or narrate something. Narration. Storytelling. <laughs> report on data or narrate a story. Okay, the instructor said narrated and the student said narrated. Perfect. <laughs> which are stories or histories, which I think is supporting question. I think they agree both on the previous. I just wanted to make it more clear. Which are stories or histories? I guess they said before, which are? Hmm, we're waiting for their answer. Okay, which is consistent with the previous one. I, I'll, I'll the just check. The faculty saying stories. Perfect. <laughs> and again, and the student saying stories. By the exactly. way, they cannot see each other's answers. So perfect. Exactly. That that's the, the essence of the exercise. So exactly because history. Why I'm saying history. History is reporting data. Story is being narrated. Right. So that's yes. important. Be with, be with us a little bit more, Mahinur. Thank you for the amazing job. We continue. A couple of more Thank questions. You. Which okay. are long, which are long or short? <laughs> Again, I push you in extremes. Yeah, and that should be different answers, by the way. <laughs> I expect you, but let's see, maybe, you know, because our, our student is a doctor. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to think like one of my students. If, if I'm asking them the questions and I can imagine how they will answer, so that's why. Of course, I also know as a student I'll answer differently. And so so this, our student here said long. Student said uh, long? The student I highly doubt. I highly doubt. <laughs> okay, me too. But because our student is a doctor, that's why. Exactly. Okay. And what about so, your faculty member? Short. Short? Yes. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> she knows the doctor. capabilities of her students. <laughs> exactly. So here we have it. But again, we are all different. And that's amazing, actually. But mm -hmm. because I'm sure they're answering sincerely in the way how they feel, right? Uh, but uh, typically, you're completely right, Mahinur, we were in the same line that if you ask a student, the student will say short, if you ask a professor long, because there are more potentially questions that you can ask to assess the yeah. deepness of student analysis, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> and, and actually the professor, the instructor continued her answer say, uh, saying that short because our students, they get bored from long <laughs> cases. Well, that's why we have the artistry of case writing. <laughs> so we have techniques of pushing that likability of a case so that you read it as if it was a story and a novel with the data and with a theory in mind that you still want to convey throughout the case. Good, so we in the right place and the right webinar. A couple of more, which provides sufficient information or not for the student to answer the questions. 
sufficient or not. <laughs> I think it's quite obvious, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe not. Maybe some will say, no, I would like them to do something, I don't know. But so uh, the instructor, yeah, the instructor said yes. Yes, and sufficient. So that you ask a question, you don't expect students to go and search in 40 million additional sources. You still and, use that. Uh -huh. And of course, the, the student said yes, of course. Exactly. Students typically prefer real boundaries. This is the case. Those are the data. So it's sufficient for me to answer the question that I was asked on it. Which are written on identifiable companies or not? The companies I can I say I'm writing on Amazon, I'm writing on okay. Alibaba, I'm writing on noon.com, I'm writing on uh, Sharjah Islamic Bank, uh, on okay. uh, any company, uh, other Fakhmi jewelry <laughs> uh, company, <laughs> family business, I'm writing on that. Family business and jewelry, female who started so, in a male dominated society a long time ago. Yes, Mahima? So both answers are yes. And, okay. uh, and and uh, and our instructor was saying that the su sufficiency of informations uh, it will be related to the case objectives itself. Perfect. So uh, that, that's what the what um, what decides which answer. And for the third question, which are uh, on identifiable com companies or not, both of them answered yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're doing an amazing job. <laughs> on topics related to course material or not <laughs> <laughs> right on because we do have the dilemma some students sometimes do ask us those questions and sometimes they even puzzle why this case is used in this course <laughs> right so yeah. it's a valuable question to ask when we of write course. our case okay so what the answer the students and the instructor uh, uh, both of them are yes. Yes, okay, so we know why it is used in this and related to course material that I taught or they want students to understand. Which describe or duplicate informant quotes? Oi, uh, do you hear me well? It says that yes, I'm experiencing yes. audio. Yeah, okay, I, I had, okay, it's good. Uh, what does it mean here, describe or duplicate informant quotes? Uh, it's when you describe, it means that you paraphrase what the respondents are saying always, or you use direct quotes from what the uh, respondents or protagonists, the main actor of the case told you. So describe, duplicate. Duplicate is basically you take direct quotes, describe, you change it and paraphrase and you describe what they told you. So the instructor here, and I think that's more uh, related to the actual case of if you're having an actual class. So the instructor said to duplicate and okay. the student said uh, no. So to describe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, good. Here it confirms my, my, my expectation. Of course, I know that, that they would like to explain why their position. I know, but I, I know that it's more complex, but still I'm pushing you yeah. to, on purpose. But I'm doing really it. explaining the answer every after every answer, they're like actually writing the explanations. <laughs> I know, remember, it's not a quiz and there is not a right. Yeah. And in many of those, you would say it depends. Of course, it depends. But those are essentials that we are trying about uh, uh, to explain about the cases, successful cases, engaging, and the ones that are most likely to win competition. And even if you push forward to get published and used by other instructors. And the last one. So here we are, which are provocative, challenging or not? like the issue that you cover there, provocative, challenging. Mm -hmm. And this relates to what we said before about long, short students getting bored. Yes. <laughs> right? The student is saying yes. Uh, and the instructor said uh, provocative, but clear. <laughs> <laughs> That's the instructor said that. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes we like to confuse more, right? The students on purpose. So that yes. uh, they, they, it's not obvious. And that's exactly the key of the case. 
so that our answer and the challenge particular is not really clear what outcome you need to generate. So that's the artistry of writing too. Mahinur, let us all clap. I'm clapping on behalf of all who are there listening to us live. And thank you so much. That a separate thank clap you. to our instructor and to our <laughs> thank students. You. <laughs> thank, thank you. For thank, thank you for sharing the perspectives and Mahinur for coordinating all this because with all those questions if you go through them you already have the fundamentals of the good case writing and at the same time of the challenge that we all face as case writers we see that the perspectives can collide or can be completely opposite and it's up to us the writer and with the help, if I elevate it to the publishing stage, the editor of the journal where you submit your case will have this challenge to help you if the case has very good potential and, if, and story to help you balance those opposite perspectives. And here we had only two stakeholders and then we take several students who have several answers, other instructors will have other answers. So we might have completely opposite views and at the same time we can have some views which are common. So the good thing about commonality, that it's quite easy. We can ask this question to a bigger sample and we'll see that at least out of those, how many, I think I asked 12 questions and I could continue, right? I asked 12 questions and at least two, eight, nine, or even maybe I'm exaggerating, I didn't calculate, but maybe Makinur, maybe you'll remember, seven to eight, definitely there was the same answer the same answer yes. Both yes. Stay home. somewhere there right we had about 70 percent yes yes 70 percent of uh, answers coinciding which already tells you if your stakeholders tell you what they prefer so do it <laughs> okay yeah. how do i do it easier said than made or done right with that we set the tone and we understand that the case is not a research case study which is a qualitative method and this is a mistake that i commonly see when i do receive cases in different journals where i sit on editorial board it is a pedagogical tool and it's not a case which is a qualitative case study in qualitative methodology which will require completely different context one so we need to know that this is fundamental so any good case writer will know a pedagogical case study a teaching case study is not a research case study even though which is remember from previous questions we need the field we need to do research we need to talk to protagonists in particular to be able to write an engaging and lively and likable and not boring case study on these identifiable organizations on recent events on challenges and dilemma provocations that we can raise so that students are like, okay if i were to be there what would i do and all this to engage your audience in that right so it's a pedagogical tool which requires research but is not written like a research case study which is a completely different type of article this obviously drives the structure of your case what would you write inside what how can you structure which are the elements of the content an engaging case study which has a very nice story relevant story a story on real companies a story on real dilemmas you can imagine yourself being there as a manager and having to solve it so you put the reader in the shoes of those protagonists by writing this type of case right you put you push and you say okay this keeps you engaging because as if you were reading a case where you not the case but even a novel story you were by where to be right you it, it drives you there in the story that's why you'll never end reading it uh, until the case is over because you go as if you were that protagonist as if you had to face that dilemma and you can identify yourself with that because those are real things that happen and we see and we witness in our environment in business news in other things and conferences right um, Per se, a very well written case study, a case study, not an exercise, because that's another mistake that we have. A case study which makes it different from exercise. An exercise, you do calculation, one plus one equal two, obviously I exaggerate, much more sophisticated, but it doesn't allow you to have this reflection, discussion about the inner subjectivities of the life of the 
protagonist of the organizational dilemma. Look at the previous questions. Um, <laughs> the doctor student told, uh, and even others who were making comments about the organization, the team, the people, the context which made uh, that mistake to happen, or who are the cause of their of the problem. And sometimes we have so many other reasons of, of the problem. It can be the infrastructure, the company, the leadership, the lack of resources, the coordination, lack of communication, so many. So a good case study is not an exercise. A case study is the one which will lead to discussion. And because of that, per se, it wouldn't have the right or wrong. Because in reality, even the instructor, even the rights of the case, even the protagonist who shared the dilemma with you doesn't know <laughs> what is the right or wrong. Only when the decision will be made in a real company and then one, two years will elapse, you will be able as protagonist and you to come back to that protagonist to see in reality, what decision did you make in this situation? And then was it now uh, making this retrospective analysis, uh, are you ready to tell us whether it was successful or not? Was that the right or, or not decision that you made? So in reality, as the case is just uh, recent and you are writing and still there is no way to verify uh, the, the, the good or the bad or something like that of this, uh, of this decision, it does not have a right answer per se. What it has, uh, information to guide, stimulate the debate and the pros and the cons, and if this, that context, that element, because it's like a puzzle with so many elements which are needed in order to achieve that decision, and for that decision to work, those elements have to be in place for it to be successful. Of course, <laughs> we know from Simon, from an old, old period of time, that decision makers are all wanting to have as much information possible to make a decision, right, in a, in a case, uh, but in the life or real life of organizations. But as Simon said a long time ago, we human beings are all uh, described or characterized by bounded rationality. We never have all the information. And that's why the case study is such an amazing tool, because students who put themselves in the protagonist's shoes will not have, I mean, it's only those 10 pages of the case that you have that they'll have to make the decision, right? So you won't have always all the information at hand. And still, you're not fully rational agent, you are bounded rationality type of agent, you are bounded by your rationality, by the amount of information that you possess, which is always limited. So students have no choice but to use the information there at hand and to make a choice, to make a decision, right? To make a call by making that reflection. So that's the case, those are the fundamentals. If we summarize some of the key elements and we go more in details of each of the aspects of the case study, realistic situation, which allows students to see why it is embedded in a given course. There is a theory behind that, but also a practice because it happens right here, right now in the organization or in the recent past. Of course, we know the student is put in the shoes, um, realistic situation, as close to the reality of what happens in the field, uh, topics which are engaging, so it allows uh, the instructor to use that in a given uh, course, and then uh, that which are not really old, uh, that if it's 40 years ago and all this, it decreases the likelihood of a student to skip reading it because it can, may be a very historical old case, which some instructors, and I really like that because we instructors do like to have some of those historical cases, like the case of the company in 1950, that's what happened, and we still extract some, uh, some learning points out of that. But students today, but reality today is quite different. So mostly the most preferred are the ones which are recent, the most preferred ones. Now, the compelling case study is focused on what? So that we make really all the conclusion related to what we write in the case. How do we write it? What a good case study has to have. Okay. This is commonly referred to different P's and it's just to help you to remember this. And by the way, all the rest of the structure of the case will be articulated around this P. Problems. Problems are basically all the both instructor and student told us that they want uh, provocative, uh, they want uh, decisional oriented uh, cases, they want something to solve. 
So when you write a case in 99%, even though we do have others, but in 99% today, the most and the only type of successful case is the case which has a clear focus on the problem that needs to be solved. That's why it's a pedagogical a training type of exercise. You have a great issue with a great challenge, nice, interesting, relevant, timely, but there is a challenge. So the problem that needs to be addressed, don't forget about that. It's very easy. You receive a case, I read the case, and I don't see the problem in the first three, two, four lines, or in the first half of the page. The case is devoted of its soul. If there is no focus on a problem, on a challenge, on a dilemma, what is the pedagogical value of this case? Second, protagonist. You already said one of the stakeholders because you said both of the perspectives were about we need cases mostly we like, we prefer cases which are um, showing the perspective of the protagonists, of people, of the actors, real people in the company. So it's important to have the protagonist voice expressed in the case study. You need to write that voice. And we will see through writing techniques what way, I think one of the questions that I asked you before kind of tells you one technique, how can you make the protagonist speak in the case? Pieces, this I would say only one P of this case, we can focus hours and hours because it's all about artistry of writing. That's when the instructor student said, students are gonna get bored, so I'm gonna give shorter cases because make them read 40 pages, and this is absolute outrageous 40, right? But typically, if you know even cases written by Harvard, um, which are indexed there in Harvard uh, uh, Business Publishing, right? Typically, they are known to be quite long. 25, 30 single space cases with uh, a lot of material there ed added there. So they're comprehensive and they're quite heavy, right? But this is, it's about because if the case is really long, how can I keep my audience there reading? So intriguing, interesting stories. And this is the artistry of writing, how you write. Not the what, but the how. The what will appear in the problems. The how is your piece, is your writing narration of the story to keep the audience hooked up till then. And what happened? What and how this problem worked? from when? How did they arrive at this problem? So that's where you navigate the reader through the different sections of the case. Another thing, possibilities. An amazing case which we just seen before, typically in per se, an amazing good case, a pedagogical case, doesn't have one solution, and even worse, one best solution. Typically, it's supposed to be a discussion tool where it will lead to a variety of different uh, decisional pathways and decisional possibilities, decisional choices, right? So that keep that in mind when you write so that you don't say, uh, it's like, this is the solution. Do you like it or not? You don't write it like that. It shouldn't be obvious to that audience. You should intrigue your audience, the students in this case, right? And paradigm, paradigm which is indirectly alluding to that theory to that content to this concept uh, from your uh, course right in the course that you embed your case study so it alludes indirectly keep in mind when you write the case right that what do i want to achieve with this case right why do i write it uh, what exactly is the learning outcome of that and i think that our instructor said all the students instructor told us that it's depending on objective of course and we'll focus on that in teaching notes webinar in in particular right so you remember those then if we go the fundamental thing and this is essentials right essential essential we cannot go out of this webinar if we don't know that essential thing of a successful of a preferred of a clear case study so relevant consideration on case structure right because we're going into the the deepness of what we write in the case the structure of that case is if we agree that a case which has a dilemma which poses a challenge which has a focus on that problem right on problem then definitely we know that the first part of the case will be definitely bringing in the forefront at the top 
of the priority in the case writing is going to be that critical decision point, that critical issue, that challenge, that focus, focus on that problem. It will be the key. Then you will go and you think about when you structure a case, right? You are there, you are writing your case. So you know, you have, you start, that essential from where you start when you try to conceptualize the way how you write your case is definitely that problem, that focus on the problem, the challenge. But then once the challenge is clear in your mind, you say, okay, what kind of information is needed for people who are gonna um, address the challenge and propose solution to that challenge, right? To that uh, critical issue. And there comes all, okay, let me try to gather information and write and put in the case information which is relevant. This is another mistake that I see. Cases become overly long when there isn't this and that and that and that. There are so many things and then I'm, I'm going back to the, to the, of course, objectives, that's one, but let's focus on the case now. The, the, the focus, the problem, how this information is really helping me to address this. If it's only tangential, it's somewhere far away, because of course, organizations are complex systems and many elements contribute. But again, remember a good case has a focus. So we need to be selective and focus on the information, not to overload our poor students and readers and select the information which is relevant to address that focus, that decision, that issue relevant information uh, which is presented throughout the case that's the narration the narrative style don't present like, all the data and we start da, 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 and it's very data reporting which is dry and students get bored at that point when those data are not diluted throughout the case and the writing throughout different pages and when it's very dry right without any narrative style so that you 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 allow them to navigate very smoothly through different sections of the case. So presented throughout, included. So if a picture is worth a thousand words, so make use, nice use of the charts, tables, diagrams, appendices, where you can add some information which is too dry to narrate. All right, when there are numbers, there are things, you can just say as table one shows the performance increased from 1980s by 50% uh, and, and uh, as compared to today, like the day when the case uh, takes place, right? So when your writing uh, happens in the case. So uh, you see that you can refer to that, but you don't need to show and write. In 1980s, there were, the performance was this. In 1980, 1981, there was this. So it's very dry, students get bored. So that's the artist's favorite narration. And any visual representation in terms of, as, as I mentioned, charts, diagrams, appendices, tables, will enhance the readability of the case. And that's the essential thing. Don't forget. And you see those two um, arrows that I said? You start in your mind, but also in the case itself, with focus on the problem. Then, in general, you put in that case all the information which is relevant to addressing that core, that big, because that problem can be decorticated in smaller ones, but that there are many elements at play. So you decorticate this, 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 a part of the problem. So let me then gather information and write the information which is relevant to address the problem. And then that's another mistake that happens. Towards the end, there are some writers who forget to go back to the focus. Meaning it's a kind of a loop that we go from the beginning, the problem. And then how did the company arrive at that problem? And there is the story, narration, data, charts, all this. And then boom, I write back. So here we are. Flashback at the beginning of the case, end of the case. Here's the problem. So what we need to do? What is to be done in order to address that? So you're closing the loop like a circular type of writing where you go from the focus to the content to the focus back. And that's your conclusion, back to the focus. And this circularity is very important when you will see the common case structure. So what is, and this is kind of really the must, this circularity from the focus to the content to the focus back at the end of the case. So typical structure of a case, a good successful case. Case opening. 
And the most commonly, guys, if you remember, you look uh, at the most uh, um, cases that you used in your classes, like if I refer to, to instructors, if I refer to students, or if I refer to other audience we have today in the webinar, that you would remember if you look at the case and we have time, I can open some of them to project on the screen, you will see that typically you have the title of the case at the top and then the case starts with no heading with no heading of introduction. No, 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 no. You don't write introduction because it's not even an introduction. It is your opportunity to hook the reader. I always refer to it in metaphorical words, throw the bomb, but that's the good bomb, if, if any good bomb can exist, <laughs> metaphorical one, in sense of like, you throw that problem, right? So you, you kind of set the scenery. Like when you have a movie, which happens uh, like uh, with a problem right away, and then it starts, okay, five years earlier, right? When you see the movie, and then it's like the story. And then towards then, uh, the, 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 uh, the person, the director of that movie brought you towards again to that beginning, which happened two hours ago when the movie started. The same here. You have the case opening and you have the opportunity about one paragraph, two paragraphs, a dialogue, between the protagonists, a typical opening where you have, and I know many already amazing case writers when, when I see and I receive them, uh, and the typical it was, and it's fundamental to see that in cases, and we'll, we'll do some examples of that if we have time, but to put the scenery by saying it was uh, late September of, 19, of 2020, uh, the protagonist's name, Virginia, was sitting on her balcony uh, overseeing uh, the uh, azure uh, color of the, of the Gulf and thinking about that problem that kept occurring in the company for the last three months. Right, so you see that, boom, second sentence, you already know uh, that there is a problem. And then you continue reading a little bit the first one, two paragraphs, and you'll see the problem. So that case opening starts with no heading, with nothing. There is just, boom, the problem, right? With these two, three paragraphs, or maybe a dialogue happening between the protagonist and somebody else in close vicinity of protagonist who influences the decision eventually, right? So if I were to ask you here, and Makinur, I'll need your help. Which P of the five previous ones I referred to, the case opening and the case structure refers to? Which P? Okay, we're waiting for the answer. Yeah, some people, yeah, some people to write. Some first uh, two, three people who will write. So case opening, which I just uh, uh, explained that idea of opening that you throw that scenery, you create that scenery and you talk about that issue. So which of the five previous P this opening refers to? So that we understand why did I mention those P and where those P are more valuable, where they should appear in the case and a well-written case study. Okay. okay. Let me remember the, the, the okay. Let me help, and then I'll not uh, I'll not do that uh, again because I want to make it difficult. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> just to remind the audience about the peace. Okay. So just to so that I have several questions about peace. Those are the five, right? So which okay. of the five P the opening of the case mostly refers to? Here. Those are the ones, okay? To help the audience to just, uh, uh, you know, uh, answer my question. Actually, actually, Virginia, there are a lot of answers. Uh, even before you show this slide, this problem. So everybody's answering problem at first. Yes, and then we have protagonist as well. Uh, perfect, perfect. You're right. The key, the most essential, of course, that protagonist will be referred there, but the essentials of the case opening, thank you, Nadine, very much. You're all right there that the key, the essence of this case opening is problem, right? Perfect. Okay. So I didn't know, I didn't need even to go back. You're too fast. Mashallah. I can even speed up. So the core of the case, then there is all this information, right? That we'll write. And here, typically, the good structure of a case will refer to background of the company right where this and you told me from the very beginning that we need to set the context so where it happens in particular apart this opening that will be very short and then you flash back okay it was that company created that time so that happened and we continue to narrate that story so typically we'll gather relevant data about the company 
about the industry because uh, most commonly we'll have competitive dynamics uh, happening with outside but if not it can be internal HR problems or motivational issues in the company uh, but it can again be affected by external data like competition people who wanna uh, who see that there are higher salaries so many issues right so relevant industry data then decision maker in that context so meaning that protagonist somewhere there and then other information which is relevant about the context of that problem that we need to tackle and address and of course some tables charts throughout appendices typically appear then of the case right so in this we can feel that let's say the most important ones as we said in case opening we will refer to protagonist but we will not learn a lot about him or her we will learn more about the problem in the case opening the same here in the core of the case what we will learn more about or whom we will learn more about so which of the p's are fundamental here in the core of the case in the core of the case right of those remaining uh, or maybe <laughs> repeated some that we mentioned so omahinura nadine so what are the audience is saying there in the core of the text what what p's are fundamental so um we're waiting for the answers so they're saying uh, decision maker. Okay, we'll get more information about protagonists, definitely. Yes. Okay. Uh, problems. And problems, we'll get more information, but it's gonna be diluted. The, 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 the essence of the problem will be more appearing right at the beginning, we'll know. The problem will get more information, but the, the, the writing will expand more on the protagonist and on the so the writing fundamental in the writing here is going to be what the the third okay. one isn't it? No, they're so saying they, yes pieces. Pieces, but mashallah, exactly. That is exactly. So that is where we go in the in the core of the case, and we'll get more information about protagonists. More, of course, problems will understand the context. The problem will not be repeated, but it's gonna lead us towards why did we read at the beginning and the opening about that problem. So we the, the way how you write it will lead us to understand the first thing. How did I arrive to that? Right? So it's gonna be pieces. The core of the case is your narration and so the story the context the company and the things and perfect what about so we have so far problems we have so far protagonists and pieces uh, so three we have still two p's what about the closing the at cl uh, the end towards the end we, we we do the situation we describe and then we're going to have the ending of the case and typically in that ending in the way how we write that ending we already understood that we go back to the problem uh, right remember that loop that we close from the focus to back the focus at the end but we will definitely um, be able and we should be able to write it in a way that we pay attention particularly to one of the piece apart the problem that we know it typically appears in, in the case opening and we have to remind about this problem at the end of the case we have to but what of the piece would be really essential so that we know how to write that and not give away things and not lead to something like the thing so uh, what of the which of the piece what, uh, what are they are right? possibilities yeah. of getting some oh, answer, so answers with possibilities. Bravo, 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 possibility, exactly, exactly. Because another mistake in the write up happens that we receive a case and there is a like it's written in a way like, okay, this is the right answer. Almost, almost it's said, almost the answer is given away to students, and mostly it is written in a way that is implied to students that this is the right and the only right. And there are no other possibilities, options, and choices. Bravo. The emphasis basically here is possibilities. Yes, you wanted to. You know, you know, doctor, I, I got this advice uh, when I started my first interaction with cases that whenever you are um, using or picking a case study or even writing, you have to leave a margin for discussion for your Perfect. students to have yeah to give their thoughts and ideas to take the decision so um i think that's a core point too perfect and it, that's a typical mistake in a case when 
instructor is so eager, I mean, the writer, I should use the word writer, the one who writes the case, who, who might be the instructor, or who mostly is the instructor, uh, is doing the analysis for the student, is giving away the answer, and is ending up falling in analyzing the situation rather than leaving it to discussion, exactly like you mentioned that in, in your comment at the end. Perfect. So now my question is, which of the P is left out and which of the P is not explicitly found in the case? <laughs> which of the P's is not explicitly found in the case? <laughs> like we mentioned four, but why did you say five? I told you five at the beginning, isn't it? So which one I wouldn't really explicitly find in the case? So which is left that we didn't mention <laughs> in the, in the content? Paradigm, thank you so much. And you would say, why did I mention that in the case writing workshop and not in the teaching writing work, in the teaching note writing workshop, which is the second one? Well, sorry, because the case is there as a pedagogical tool and because you clearly have to have in mind, why do you use it in your course? Why at this period of time after chapter two, which talks about external environment or ethics or governance or anything, right? Why did you put here and not at the end, right? Because you want to reinforce a specific theoretical paradigm, perspective, problem from theoretical point of view, which you covered in your course. So you have to keep in mind that the case has to give the information related to this paradigm. While you will not say what paradigm is that, you will work on that paradigm to make it explicit in the teaching note, not here. But it's very important to keep in mind that because you have to give the student the information to answer and reiterate that paradigm through the answer. So they should be understanding what kind of theories to use to answer, to, to, to answer, to, to formulate a debate, to talk about pros and cons, to talk about alternatives, right? To be able to then formulate potential recommendation of the solution to the problem. So I'm starting then. What about the problems? And we have a couple of minutes also to go before Kahoot, right? So my question is, what about the problem? So the P, more in details. What about the problem in terms of cases? Stated where in the case? By now we know it, right? So I wanted to reiterate that and make sure that it's always the case. Stated where in the case the problem? Stated in the opening paragraph and also at the end, right? We know that already it is a must. It is a rule, right, that we have to do that. What problems can it be there, right? A lot. And we know through your answers and interactions that yeah, those can be problems related to um, timely issues going on. Uh, in newspaper, you read something and you might approach a company to ask them to share their perspective on the issue. The trends that we are living right now with COVID, with so many companies undertaking digitization of their processes. There are so many potential problems that are so interesting for students who are entering this world in such a difficult time period of, of of the, their life, right, in a completely un, 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 uncharted territory. So it is also important that it, it has to be interesting, of course, to students and timely and relevant. And students have to imagine themselves in the place of those protagonists. We talked about that, so I wanted to make sure that we see that again. What about protagonists? So protagonists is the decision maker, definitely. The protagonist appears more, we've seen, named at the beginning, and then we provide information more in the core of the, of the case. And then protagonist is the one who is faced with the challenge again at the end, right? So the case information will give you more details about the characteristics, the inner world, the subjectivities of protagonists. You need to shed some things about, because the decisions of that uh, protagonists are going to be um, colored by prior experiences, but what by what that person experienced in other organization, by the team, by his her position in the organization. So it's very important to provide this information. I asked you before, and I think through this interaction you already understood that we need to make the protagonist speak in the case. The common mistake that writers make is that they want to overtly describe and paraphrase all of the quotes. Of course, we cannot write the case with only quotes from the interviews with protagonists, right? But at the same time, giving voice, giving the, the, the protagonist um, capacity to speak 
through quotes, direct quotes, it's much better in appropriate, relevant, and spread throughout the case places. So it's like you'll not write one page, just a quote from the entire interview. No, you don't do that. You alternate between description, content, and the quotes, the dialogues between actors where the protagonist is embedded, or some of the quotes from the interviews which are relevant, catchy, and use really the language of that protagonist, which make it even more lively, realistic, and uh, attractive to the reader, right? So that's how you make uh, the protagonist speak in the case. What about pieces? And here we can have so many advices about the, uh, the way how we do that. Uh, you understood by now with your answers that that pieces is all about the writing. And that's why my common advice, I always say, because, well, we want to write in English, we do have, but maybe, maybe few in Arabic outlets where you can publish in, in Arabic, uh, we can publish in French and all this. So at one point, of course, you might feel a lot of the story in your mind, but when it, it goes from your mind to the paper, to the laptop, um, it's not so su successfully conveyed. So I always share that advice to collaborate to have a team of writers, particularly if you start writing, it's your first, second, first 10 experiences. And even with experiences, you still learn over time because uh, topics are different. And even you wanna alternate between different styles. But the fundamental thing is really to have good, understandable cases, meaning with good language. So for that, I always say, take on your team someone, or if you don't take on the team, make use of the resources uh, if you have funds to uh, proofread your cases, to have somebody who um, has amazing skills in that particular language and who helps you to convey the beautiful story you might have in your, in your mind through the optimal language, optimal words, um, alternating the verbs you are using, not repeating always the same type of verbs. Use, 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 right? Or decide, 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 decide. There are so many English or any language is very rich in synonyms and alternation among those things is fundamental. Not in the essential, like if we say we use a return on investment as a concept, you cannot use synonyms for that, of course not because return on investment is not return on asset and either way around, right? But in your narration, in the style, it's really what makes the reader get engaged in that. If you use nice stories, if the student or the reader is following that story through all this artistry of language and those techniques of engaging style, um, using paraphrasing, using synonym, using catchy words, using some quotes, using some buzzwords that students, younger generation, depending on the case and the objective, can identify with, uh, with that, that uh, buzzword that emerges, right? So I put here just a couple of quotes about writing so that you understand again why the preferred cases are always the ones which are stories and not histories, not the rough and dry reporting of things, but which create a link and a story. And exactly Stephen King, one who says, <laughs> there are a lot of great uh, uh, writings, in, 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 but not all of them have very good stories or the other way around. But if you have both and good stories and uh, stories which count in a nice way the history and data, that is the best book that you can have. So if, uh, and then you have Kipling also telling, uh, if um, history were to be taught in the form of stories, it would never be forgotten, right? So make your teaching uh, engaging. And the same here, you convey the problem, but in an engaging style. And here, uh, just as a piece of advice about these writing uh, techniques, right? So what aspects to consider in that uh, when you write, writing style? There is another essential, and this is another rule, and it's still a common mistake when we receive cases, when we have to assess cases, publish cases, review cases, um, evaluate them for competitions. You know the common mistake? Let me see, and I'll ask that question. All the cases, and I do repeat, all the cases, and here, yes, it seems like one best way and one best solution, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, but at least it gives a clear indication to all case writers. What tense do we use to write a pedagogical case study? Tense, right? We have uh, a lot 
uh, we can have continuous tense like to be doing right continuous we have present tense which is the simplest i am uh, this i say uh, oh, that's past i i do i eat i sit i decide that's present we have past i did i said um perfect past have be, have done right we have future we have future in the past so <laughs> grammar is important in writing we know that be it a case study be it an article right it's important but let's see what the audience is saying on adin or makinur what the audience is saying there is only one tense typically that we use with small alteration but it's still referring to that one tense. what is that Okay, um, uh, Dr. Mona Ali is saying past, and Dr. Thuraya is saying simple past, and there is another answer from Ben Saad, which is present. Okay, okay, good. So the first two are correct because any alteration, and I can say even future in the past, which in English is li um, a little bit, um, um, I would say, more simple than in other languages. I don't even want to think about Arabic, to write a case in Arabic, because Arabic is such a complex language. In English, it's relatively simpler. Would do, would do, it refers to future in the past, and that's the technique you, you say. Even it can be a conditional, depending. In English, there are several verbs which can refer to future in the past or can refer to a conditional future. So, but the correct answers, are the ones you will see everything which relates to past. So the simplest answer, answer directly without saying it can be simple past, future in the past, but the essence of the case, because future in the past you'll use more for the like opening, uh, the ending the case and opening it for discussion, right? I must remember that all the cases are written in the past tense. That's it, easy to remember. Why? Imagine you're writing today about a company that you interviewed yesterday, right? So this event happened yesterday and you start writing now. How long would it take you to write it? A good case takes months sometimes to from one, two, three, with the research, with this and put it in writing and have it proofread, good structure, everything takes several months. Imagine you want others to use it. You will pretest it in your classroom, ideally, and you would like others to use it. You would go to apply, to, to submit the case to a journal. Editors will read, journal is a peer review process. It takes sometimes one year, two years sometimes. It's a lengthy process because we depend on reviewers. And reviewers are busy and this and that. So by the time your case is published, and I am in UAE and I want to use a case of Egypt and I'll go to search Egypt, a case, I want something really. And I find your case and I read your case about an event. So it took at least two years. And then the event eventually, even the year before that protagonist referred to. So by the time I access it, it's three years. So I cannot read, um, the, this is, um, um, does this, the, the, this uh, is uh, going to um, do this. Right? No, no, no. It's already the past. The, by the time people who read it is already past that event or something like it's already happening there in the past. So I know many writers are so uncomfortable when even they say there were so many or the company was operating. They say, but it's still operating today. Yes, yes, yes. But the event and everything referring to the, it's the past. It happened there. So I know that there are awkward ones sometimes. Really, in even this, I say past. Yes, everything throughout. This is the rule: past tense, right? And there are small alternation in that in terms of if you put some future in the past, but past tense is the must. Overall structure. That, Virginia, there. Yeah. Oh, sorry How to interrupt minutes? you. There's a question oh, yeah, related yeah. to this. Okay, let me finish this. I'll just do one, okay. one minute I need and we go for Kahoot. For Kahoot, let's see what we learn from this, uh, from this element. And even if we answer the Kahoot and there are some comments that I make on each of them, if I didn't manage to cover everything, the time is flies and I love the interaction that we succeeded to have in a virtual environment, we were skeptical. So I'll comment on your answers, like to the entire audience, and I'll provide eventually additional information uh, to that to support uh, uh, the, 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 the right answer. I tried to find all the questions in Kahoot for the right answer. So let me finish that. Structure, we know that we have to have a structured case to be able to guide the reader through that. So sections, headings, subheadings, right, to support 
the, 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 the decision maker, who is a student, to make a decision, to propose a decision. Flow of ideas, which we refer to narration style. So you see how this connects to this, from where it comes, who is that person, right? Um, artistry of writing refers also to being organized. Um, many times it's the cases all over, the information is all over. Um, people assume that uh, acronyms are known. I always introduce the acronym first time as a full form, chief executive officer, parenthesis, CEO, first time, and then refer to the acronym already, right? So those are, it seems like a minor thing, but they are essential in predisposing the reader to your case. Uh, consistency of the of ideas, content-wise, so don't uh, write things that you said before and then you suddenly forgot you said and then you say the opposite. It confuses the, the reader. It's like make up your mind, right? <laughs> that and, uh, and keep up that, right? That the thing not to contradict yourself in some, some essential background information that you said. And many times we receive this information. Like, the company was launched in 1997. And then somewhere towards the end of the case, they refer to, it was a, a very recurrent issue, particularly since the company was founded in 1998. So seven or eight, right? So, uh, okay, so make up your mind, don't contradict. Uh, quality of the language, we said already, sentence structure, grammar, all these. And don't ignore the importance of all those visuals, charts, tables, and all these that students can easily refer to to make up their mind for the decision they propose. Okay, so let's stop here. And I think we have, so you can stop then sharing my screen for now because we'll go for another screen we're gonna quiz you now <laughs> no it's a, of course it's a it's a joke but we'd like to see some learning aspects from this webinar uh, where you would know the rules fundamental rules you'll know you'll not do those mistakes like for instance writing in a specific this having always to mention this and that uh, preferences that we know right so it's all for me nadine if you can we we are going for sure. kahoot right so we can yes, go yes. we will start kahoot now may he will uh, will share her screen and she will run kahoot for you now good luck with that good luck to everyone okay maybe there are some so i'll try to uh, to help uh, after you answer i'll comment after each of the questions because eventually some of the kahoot depending where they appear maybe i didn't explicitly say but i'll take the opportunity through kahoot to, to, to reiterate the right answer, right? The, the, the good answer, the most preferable, let's say, answer. Let's put it that way. There are some which are the right and there are some which are preferred, right? Okay, good. And I think, um, who will help us to do okay. that, Nadine? Yes, hello. Makinur, okay. So Makinur, I think you'll tell us how long they have. Yes. So they have uh, hello, everyone. So this is the Kahoot for today. And uh, the answer, uh, the, uh, the questions are basically from today's session. Uh, so you will go to www.kahoot.it. You don't need to install the app. You don't need to have an account or anything. You'll just go to uh, enter game pin and you will put this uh, pin in the game. Uh, it's 9026. 713. You'll go to www.kahoot.it. You'll just enter the game pin and put this number 9026713. 9026713. So basically, we have 10 questions. Every question, you'll have 30 seconds to pick and answer the right answer from it you will be taking your score when you do that get the right answer and also answer quickly so the right answer and the quicker you answer you'll get a higher score and of course we'll have uh, the three top uh, uh, winners at the end of the kahoot game and uh, we'll have time for dr virginia also after every question to, uh, to um, uh, yeah, to comment on it. So we're so waiting for after each question, right? I have the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. So we have more people doing that. Very good. 
Uh, we'll announce who are the top three, right, uh, Mahinur? Yes. Yeah, yes. Very good. But so have, have it's automated. It's uh, the the score gets automated uh, automatically collect, uh, collected. Exactly. Yes. Perfect. So we have 24 players so far. Yes, so far, so far. we're waiting for others to join. So. so you said 30 seconds, right? 30 seconds, not yes. one minute. 30. Yeah. Yes. And you help you help to read it or they read it alone? Yes. I'll I'll read the question and uh, and they can see the answers and uh, and uh, and they can pick the right answer. Okay, I, I'll just help to tell you there is only one answer to pick, not two correct yes. something. One yes. most preferred, the most likely, the most preferred, the most, uh, you know, that's why we had this perspective discussion at the beginning of the webinar, right? So the most likely to be uh, to be preferred, let's say. <laughs> to make it easier for you, so it's an, an only single uh, answer, you not multiple answers, so it's uh, it's much easier. Exactly. So that you don't have to think about picking several. Just make the one which is the most <laughs> likely yes. to be to be preferred. So, so anyone else joining? I really wish I can play. <laughs> I know, like even me, I forgot the right answers. <laughs> I was telling Nadine yesterday, it's like, Nadine, it took me so long and I'm still, I wanted 10. And I was like about five or six and Nadine, it's tough. It's tough to form and give choices and which are exactly like writing a case. I didn't want to give the dancers away, right? <laughs> so yeah. it's like, okay, okay, so what, but which would make sense and at the same engaging. And so I, I tried to make it the, this interesting for everyone so that you can it have is, fun. It is, it is. So I'm doing all, this all the time, imagine. Oh my God, really? So in your in your teaching, because yes, yeah, students sing, love that and it's engaging. And at the yeah. same time, they, they learn a lot. So you'll remember that forever. Yes, so anyone else? So we'll start and they can join uh, along the, the game. So it's not to waste time or exceed the time for our session. So let, the, let's get this game started. Good luck. <laughs> uh, good luck, everyone. Writing, engaging, and relevant case studies. So the first question, where the decision point or focus of a teaching case is stated? Where the decision point or focus of a teaching case is stated? <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, am I I'm am I doing the second question? No, no, yes. but, uh, let me comment you first. Right? Comment if you'd like to. Yeah, I would like to. So where do I see the the um the, the back to the previous one, I think. Where do I see what's the the answers? Like the most answer, how many answers what? In the back, right? Oh yeah, we only had seven uh okay. seven, yeah seven right answers and we didn't show them i want them to see to see that so basically i think I, I rapidly saw that only seven and the majority mentioned only like 14 were who mentioned that the, yeah the decisional um or the focus of decisional element or in other words problem is mentioned only in the beginning of the case remember the loop we refer to it is mentioned is the case opening at the at the beginning so it's not introduction it's case opening like i mentioned before right and remember that you walk the reader and you refer at the end to the problem so that you close the loop so the right answer was you mentioned that decisional focus or element of a problem in the beginning of the case meaning case opening and at the end case closing right so that was the correct answer okay we need more webinar <laughs> for that okay. good luck okay so let's move to the second question 
The second question, which of the statements below is correct? The most successful case studies are, which of the statements below is correct? The most successful case studies are, <laughs> so, is this correct or wrong? So, yeah, they're saying none of the above. The majority saying none of the above. Okay, so is it correct? Correct answer in green is correct answer? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, why this is the case, right? So what I've done, I just reverted what I've said through your perspective and you're very right. Remember we said the good cases and preferred cases are the ones which are stories not history so first sentence i just reverted it in yellow unprovocative rather than provocative no we said we want provocative third describing interview quotes rather than it's not rather it's you can do and one and another to navigate so none of the above is correct so i'm very happy to see that 13 uh, are right that's about the artistry of writing of a good engaging case study very right and others maybe because Maybe I think it's a little bit fast or quick because some questions are quite long, but this is the condition of the game, fast and quick, <laughs> right? So good, it's correct. 13 is the, is the I mean, the, um, none of the above is the correct answer. Thank you, okay. let's move to the next one. Let's see, okay. So the third question, which of the following statements is not correct? Teaching cases should include which of the following statements is not correct? Is not teaching correct. Cases, yeah, is not correct. Teaching cases should include. Okay, <laughs> very happy to see that majority has the right answer. There is no a literature review section in a case study, which is a pedagogical case study, the one that we are talking today about. You can use uh, the secondary data to shed some light on the context, but you are not writing a literature review like in a qualitative case study writing, where you have a section of literature review and you'll start writing. And this is a common mistake we see for uh, more younger, in terms of experienced case writers, when they start and they put theory inside of the case. No, don't misinterpret it with them referencing to some uh, let's say practitioner reports. For instance, if you say the industry was very dynamic and there were additional competitors entering the scene like company one, two, three, and you can in parentheses cite um, McKinsey report 2020. But this is not a literature review where we start with um, Taylor and Francis uh, 2020 um, uh, found that the theory of uh, networking affect positively people relationship. No, 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 no. This is not what is being done. This is not a research, qualitative research case study. This is a pedagogical one. So there is no literature review as such section in the case study. So the majority is correct. Bravo. So we are ready mm -hmm. to move to the next. Yes. So, see, new people are going to um, taking the first places. So, okay. fourth question: Which of the following statements is correct? All the cases should be written in the. This one you should get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, I tortured a little bit the audience with this <laughs> a little bit before, just before there. <laughs> Let me see if this one is not full correctly answered. No! <laughs> no, I still have six, seven, uh, ten people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Okay, so remember that we will reiterate it again. All the case, and he is really not preference. This is not about, this is maybe only one question which is not about preference, the majority's preference. This is the rule done since ever since the case writing method started in terms of pedagogical case writing. The cases, pedagogical cases, are all written in the past tense. Past tense. I think now you'll remember. Pass always. It's not a choice. It's not a preference. It is a rule. All the cases are written in the past tense, right? And you can again, simple past, more uh, future in the past for the potential decision or alternatives, possibilities. But it is past, not present, not future, not continuous. It's past. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let's move. <laughs> okay. They're answering more complex questions, uh, yes. right? More unanimously than this one. This one I saw because this is. Yeah, the fifth question is the case study narrative should always lead to. The case study narrative should always lead to. Okay, so what do we have there? I, I'm looking at my screen. We have yeah. 10, 10, 1, and 14. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I love that answer of the 14 guys who said all of the above. <laughs> Some of them are contradictory, the choices that I gave you here, right? So basically the right answer is not the majority's right answer. Uh, right, uh, because remember the P of possibilities. Uh, so a good narrative of a case, when you write a case, it should be engaging all this, but it should not leave towards like it's written in a way that you guide the student by saying this is the right answer and this is it. So not one commonly agreed solution to the stated problems. There might be several. And it, that's how the decision making happens in the case. So we can start negotiating with all stakeholders to convince about your solution, but another student can find another solution. Another. So typically an ideal case study, a preferred case study, a successful case study is the one which structures its narrative in a way that it opens the flow, exactly like Makinou said before, it opens the flow for discussion. So if you wrote it in a way that it leads to one, you know how long your discussion in the in the in the classroom will take? Uh, uh, one minute. Everybody said, "Yeah, yeah, that's the right solution." Okay, let's go. Okay, finish. Let's go. Our class is over. No, the right answer will be in the tenth one in the red color here. So the ten people here completely right. Open to debate. So it leads to open debate about possibilities of solutions, right? That exist. Thank you. Okay, we have five more questions, so we are almost done. Okay. Now, so um, the sixth question is, a well-written teaching case should always indicate in its write-up the following. A well-written teaching case should always indicate in its write-up the following. Okay, you see how we're improving. That's amazing. Now majority is right and is completely correct. The majority, uh, because you're completely right. So I put there everything possible, and in reality, none of the above uh, was correct. So a, we never in our content of the case study, we never refer to the theoretical framework explicitly. Never. We don't say we use the theory of networking in order to address the, the solution or the problem and then find solution. Uh, the author will voice about the events that occur in the companies, uh, um, in, the, in the case company. It's not about me, the writer, to say what I believe or not. You leave the student, the reader, to decide. I cannot impose myself. 
and it's not correct it's not right because i i push them towards my answer because this is my subjective answer but not somebody else so never the author's recommendations to the protagonist of the case the same thing here no it's not about analysis of what the writer wants to analyze that's another story so none of those were correct so the 13 the majority is right very good next okay. one the next one Okay, main is leading the game. The most commonly, the best teaching case studies, most commonly, the best teaching case studies, what do they do, what they're supposed to do? Okay, this one is you know more complex because it's uh, you have to read carefully. I think thirty seconds it's a bit, but the audience is very is very you know much engaged in that, so it's learning through that, and that's the purpose of Kahoot too. So here the opinions are divided, but actually the right answer is the last one. So ten people, majority if we take nine to ten, said all of the above, and that's completely right. The preferred ones are the ones field data, provide sufficient background information, and permit to address a limited number of teaching objectives that we'll see in the teaching notes webinar next time. Okay. Next. Okay. The eighth question: the most effective way to bring people to life in the case include. The most effective way to bring people to life in the case includes. Include. Okay, perfect. Majority is right. No need to comment very much. But that's exactly how you make the protagonist speak by including direct quotes from interviews with protagonists. Very right. 14 people. Bravo. Two more questions and we're done. Okay. So the ninth question the key difference or differences between a primary data case and a sec secondary data case is or are the key difference or differences between a primary data case and a secondary data case is or are Okay, so it's it was long to read the choices, right? So it's divided a little bit, but actually all of the above. So primary type of sources as opposed to secondary. Uh, subjective world can be digged into more if you are doing primary case rather than secondary case. Whether or not the author needs to obtain the authorization of the protagonist. You need to obtain this authorization in primary data case, but not in the secondary one. So all of the above, the last one, D, was correct. And we have the last question. Okay. So the last but not least, the last question. The five P's of engaging and relevant case studies refer to the five P's of engaging and relevant case studies refer to. Okay, <laughs> bingo, that's uh, correct, yeah. that's exactly the five elements. Thanks a lot, the Kahoot is over, let's see who is the leader, who is the winner, who are the top three. <laughs> Our podium, so the third winner is... Oh, <laughs> Dr. 
name is Mona Ali. And wow. second Mina. And our top winner is SM. SM. <laughs> Who is SM? Congratulations, 10 out of 10. And the other two, second spot because it's faster and third spot nine. Yes. Mashallah, bravo. We are looking forward to your cases. Mm -hmm. Amazing time management. And thank you, Mahinur, for that. Uh, you've done You're an amazing job coordinating that. Thank you. I, I think, Nadine, we need one minute to make some announcements now, right? In the last two minutes. Yes, we do. So, um, so now uh, I, I invite Inji to to give a very important announcement from both Emerald and KCC. So, Inji, can you please uh, make the announcement for us? Okay. Uh, yes. You want Thank you so much, Dr. Virginia. Thank you so much for such an interactive, engaging, and extremely insightful workshop. I believe by now all of the attendees have really captured the main essence of what a case study main components. Um, we in KCC, Khazandar Business Research and Case Center at the American University in Cairo School of Business, in cooperation with Emerald Publishing, we are announcing our um, 2021 case writing competition. Uh, we're looking forward to the development of high quality case teaching, as Dr. Virginia has stressed on the case teaching pedagogical case studies from the region, from the Arab region, Turkey and Pakistan. So we invite you all to participate in this competition. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the end of this seminar, which was extremely uh, beneficial, as well as the upcoming two, uh, we urge you to also register because I saw that in one of the questions, uh, some of the attendees were asking if they were automatically be registered in the upcoming, upcoming webinars or not. Actually, please do register. You have to re-register for each and every single one separately. Um, and hopefully by the end of this series, you will be able to provide an extremely high quality case teaching case study. We also have monetary prizes. We have $1,500 for the first place, $500 for the second place, and $250 for the second place. The case could be written by single author or multiple authors. So again, we encourage you if you want to team up so that you would diversify the expertise and skills. That's totally fine by us as well. Uh, and then it's not only about the monetary prize, it's also about being published in the Emerald Emerging Markets case collection. So I think the benefit uh, is everywhere from all sides, from all perspectives, uh, and we're looking forward to case submissions. Thank you. Thank you, Inji. Thank you very much, Verdinia, and everyone in the audience for such an engaging session. We will be sending uh, the recording and all resources in a follow-up email, and see you in the next session in this, in, this, in this series. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for having me, Inji and Adin Mahinur, for helping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's our honor. On June 29th for the second, June 29th. Thank you to all. Looking, Amazing job. Thank Looking you. forward. Bye bye. Oh. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.